Hello. Good evening. Right. Any questions from last class? Any doubts? Uh, no. Did you revise? Yes, I did read a bit. Okay. Uh, you have to address you'll forget. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Last class, there was some slight confusion here. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, what is given in the book is correct. Okay. There was confusion in this direction of the current. Here I put like this, no? And the yes. book is opposite direction. The important thing to realize is the coil, the one portion is, is dark. This part. Yes. This half. That is out of the paper. Okay, okay. And this light portion on the other side, it's on the other side. Okay. 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 So with that understanding, the current is uh, going in this direction. So this direction is correct. And it is into the paper. So this is also correct. And here it is. Uh, like this and it is coming out like this mm -hmm. so minor condition so the directions given in the book are correct for the current okay okay so it's going in here and then coming out here mm -hmm. okay. and uh, the right hand tool says the thumb has to go in the direction of current and the four fingers will in the direction of the magnetic field. So in this top part, the thumb will go inside in the direction of current. In this top part, okay, mm -hmm. thumb is into the paper. Okay, and the fingers are yeah. in the direction of the magnetic field, four fingers. So this mm -hmm. is correct. Right? Today. Bottom portion, the thumb is pointing towards you, away from the screen or the paper. And the current is along the direction of these four fingers. So this is also correct. Right. Okay. Right. So we did last time. Uh, last class we studied one circular coil, no? Circular yes. coil of current. And then to get the direction of magnetic field, now to use the right hand thumb rule, uh, in yeah. which the direction of thumb is the direction of what? Uh, for the magnetic field in the circular loop, it would be the magnetic field would be the thumb and the uh, current would be the fingers. Yes. So if you use that thing, you'll get this direction, right? Mm -hmm. this, this magnetic field direction. Okay. And this is the direction of current. Okay. Uh, yes. So this is out of the chain of paper. So if you visualize properly, it will give me the direction of uh, the magnetic field. So, what is the difference between this one and the single circular loop? Uh, so, this one has uh, many turns in it. It's like uh, turned. And it has, uh, it, it's longer and uh, the diameter is smaller as compared to that. Yeah. So, one loop is like one, one coil, one circular coil, right? Mm -hmm. One turn. It's like one circular coil. Yes. Okay, but circular coil will be closed, but this thing is a little bit open because it's going to the next turn, right? Mm -hmm. But it's approximately yeah. a circular coil only, okay? Okay, and the direction of current they are given, so that will give the direction of magnetic field, okay? The important thing notices the field inside this uh, coil, it's approximately uniform here. The strength of the magnetic field is given by what? Using the field picture, uh, the strength of magnetic field is related to uh, field lines, right? Yes. So if number of lines are more, then the B field is more or what? Uh, if, if it's more, then the density increases. Yeah. So density of lines you can say directly proportional right yes yes okay 
and if you see the inside the uh, solenoid this is called solenoid the group of coiled terms okay, okay. right so inside the solenoid you can see that the uh, distance between the lines is approximately constant yes so B, you can say b is uniform inside the solenoid mm. b would be uniform approximately uniform inside okay but if you compare here the b is decreasing right because the yeah. distance between the lines is more that right indirectly says that the density is less okay yes so inside is approximately constant so this is an important uh, property of a solenoid suppose you want to create a region of constant uniform magnetic field use the solenoid and the, the region is inside the solenoid okay what do you understand by uniform uh they like at equal distances to each other uniform means not changing with space okay so inside any point if you choose they are equal in terms of the mm -hmm. simple magnetic field okay so from point okay. to point inside the solenoid the value of b is not changing so that's why it's uniform right okay so the thing which is not changing with time what is it called something which is not changing from point to point in space is called uniform right something which is not changing with time is called what not changing with time time so it's constant yes so these are two different um, concepts uniform is not changing with point to point in space constant is not changing with time right okay right now uh, we are going to find force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field uh, you know you have two two bar magnets there will there be some force right yes two bar magnets okay even a needle is a bar magnet okay so not mm. not there will be repulsion okay and you also seen that a current carrying wire is equal to a bar magnet because both of them produce magnetic fields yes okay so since there can be a force between two bar magnets okay there can be force between current carrying wire and also a bar magnet because uh, bar magnet is equal to a current carrying wire uh -huh. okay okay so in this figure we have one magnet right this red one the permanent magnet and uh, i think north pole is south uh, here it is in north and this is south okay and this is a uh, comparison yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and this is a current carrying conductor okay and the current is flowing in a circuit like this okay this this connecting wires and this is a conducting rod okay so there will be force of interaction between this magnet and this conductor okay so if you switch off the current uh, the key if by opening this key okay it, the rod will be in some position the conductor okay so once i close this key the current will start flowing and the position of the conductor will change okay okay because of the force between the magnet and the conductor current carrying conductor so it is like a compass needle deflecting when you bring close to a current carrying conductor right basically there is some force between two magnets or one magnet and a current carrying conductor right so you can see the deflection in this rod when you open this key and close this key okay okay right and the direction of the force is given by a rule this rule is named after fleming okay it's called fleming's left hand rule this rule is for finding what uh 
the uh, force of the field? Finding direction of force. Okay. Okay. So the rule is the thumb is indicating the direction of motion or the force. Okay, direction of motion is same as the direction of the force. Okay. Okay. Uh, by Newton's second law, if you could m into a, right? Yes. Uh, this is motion, acceleration, right? And this is the force. Okay, the direction of motion and force are same. Okay, so it's very weak. The direction of motion here and the force are same. Okay, field means the magnetic okay. field B, and the current is I. Okay, and this uh, motion and the direction of force are same. So let me call this F. Okay, so okay. the way to remember this is FBI. You know what is FBI? Yes. What is it? Oh, so like in the way like the the one that investigates and all that? Yeah, we have CBI in our country, right? Yes. So similarly, FBI is there in US. Okay, so remember FBI starting from thumb. Okay, so thumb is F, uh, next is B, next is I. Okay, mm -hmm. so this way you can remember F is force, B is magnetic field, I is current. Okay. Okay, this is from the left hand rule to find the direction of force. Okay. Mm -hmm. So left for finding direction of force. Uh, you heard of electrical motor in your previous classes, previous years? Uh, I have heard about it. Okay. What is the electrical motor do? So basically, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it helps in generation of electricity. Uh, just the opposite. It is see there is electric motor in your home. I'm not sure. I think so. Okay, that is in home. You don't generate electricity, right? You use electricity. So this thing yes. output is output is mechanical power. Mechanical power. Input is what? Mm. Current or electrical power. Okay. Okay, that's what happens in home, right? You have electric supply. You see that you used to run some uh, water water pump or something. So everything is a motor. Right? Right. Okay. Okay. So here in this, uh, there is a battery which generates mm. current. Okay, and uh, what does structure look like? This part. There is one dark color thing, right? Yes. What is that thing? So it's like a split ring. The yeah. the ring. Yeah, it's, it's a conductor, and and there is a gap here. Okay. So the current cannot flow from one part to another part. They are insulated because of the gap. Okay. And there is a gap here. That's why it's called split. Because there is a gap. Right. Right. The split rings. And after that, uh, uh, what is this thing? There is something touching it, right? Yes. Right. So, and uh, this part is. Uh, okay, the current will flow here, and uh, the current is flowing in this direction, and and there is magnetic field, right? So there will be a force on this uh, conductor. Right. So what will be the direction of force? Direction of the force. So depends on from where the magnetic field is coming. You have to use this, right? This is for finding the direction of force. Yes. So use this FBI, and then you have to. Tell me the rates of current.
so the current is i right so the middle yeah. finger the middle finger is going inside mm-hmm. and the thumb so is from thumb and the so index upwards yes it is upwards okay um the middle middle finger is in the direction of current the four finger or the index finger is from north to south okay and thumb is upwards and the thumb is the direction of force okay and what about the, the, this part the current is going this way right right so it would go down i think yeah so because of what happened to the coil uh so the coil will keep rotating right yeah it, it will get a rotation but it will not move up or move down because these two forces are cancelled it will only create a rotational motion and moreover it will, it will be fixed here somewhere this axis it will be fixed it is not shown okay so it will start rotating okay so when it rotates so this part will also rotate and this part which is uh, touching this one okay this is a small rectangle i think it's called brush left hand rule fbi we are getting the direction of uh, coil rotation as clockwise okay right so now we have a uh, this is a coil and then is very not only and here there is a magnet okay so when you move this magnet inside what is happening so there will be a magnetic field produced there will be a field produced so field is already there okay magnet, magnet will have field like this right okay So would that produce an electric current? Yeah, but the uh, when it moves inside, see when it is here, the magnetic field value here is something, right? Some value inside. When it moves, yes. the value of magnetic field increases or decreases. Oh, where? So initially the magnet is here outside. Okay, so the value mm. of P here, let it be P at time t one. Okay, now I am moving this magnet here. It has come here at time t two, and let the magnetic field at that point, same point, will be b of t two. So, which value is more, b of t one or b of t two? T one. T one is here. Okay, at time t one, I want to find the magnetic field at this point. This point p. Okay, and the time period the magnet has come inside, and I want to find the magnetic. I learned that the magnetic field value will be B of B at T two. So, which value of magnetic field is more, at time T one or T two? Oh, then I think it will be T two. Yeah, closer to the magnet, magnetic field is getting stronger, no? Right. Okay, if you get closer to the magnet, the density of field is increasing. So the value of the magnetic field will uh, increase. So as time progresses, the when the magnet is approaching this uh, as magnet approaches, mm-hmm. the coil. Okay. So because of it, there will be there will be some current flowing in this wire. Okay. Uh, okay. Right, and this phenomena is called induction of current. You see, the current is getting induced, right, in this wire. Right. Here in this uh, circuit, there is no battery to drive the current. Mm-hmm. Okay. Only a uh, some galvanometer is there to measure the current. 
okay but still the current is flowing and that flow of current is happening because of this magnetic field changing by the moment of the magnet so the current is getting induced because of the magnetic field changing and okay. this, this phenomena is called induction mm -hmm. and it's electromagnetic induction electricity is induced by magnetic field electromagnetic right mm -hmm. okay. now to find the direction of this current induced here what is the uh, in some sense in this phenomena what is the input and what is the output so input i think would be the magnetic field and output would be the uh, current produced uh, input is magnetic field and the movement just if you keep the magnets uh, in the same position okay. the movement so yeah. the change in magnetic field. Yeah. If you just keep the magnetic field at the same position, then there won't be any current. Okay. Once I start moving the magnet, then the current will happen. So input is both magnetic field and the movement. And the output is current. Okay. So okay. now we have to use this uh, right hand rule to give the direction of what? output quantity always input is known to give the direction of i okay so right hand rule to get the direction of current and the left hand rule to get the direction of force force Okay, again the same thing, FPI only. Thumb is F. Moment and force are same, right? Direction. Mm -hmm. And then B, magnetic field, and I. So to start with the thumb, and then you say FBI. Okay. So this is the direction of current. Okay. Uh, electrical generator, what is the output? Mm, um, and what is input? Input is again maybe the current? Uh, no, generator, no. Input is, uh, um, output is current because that is motor. You already studied motor, right? Motor, the input is current, output is mechanical power. So generator is opposite. It is generating current. That's why it's called generator. And it's electricity, right? Electric generator. So it's generating electricity. Okay, okay. Uh, input is mechanical power. It's electrical generator, so generator of electricity. Okay. So here uh, the input is not shown. So this thing which is there in the middle, it's like a rotating part. So this is being rotated by some external thing. Good mechanical force, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's being rotated. Okay. So, because, uh, so let the coil rotate in clockwise direction uh, okay that we have to check whether it's clockwise or anticlockwise and he's showing the direction of current as this one this is the direction of current so what will be the direction of force what is the FBI uh, and the right hand or left hand You're using right hand or left hand? Right hand. Uh, because its output is current. Current. It is a generator. So right hand, the middle finger is going inside the paper and the forefinger is from left to right, north to south, and the thumb is upwards. So it is clockwise mm -hmm. only. So the force here is upwards and the force here will be downwards. Yes. Can you check that? Because the middle finger is coming out, 
and then the index finger is left to right and the thumb is downwards okay mm -hmm. the circuit will be a clockwise rotation and this clockwise rotation for the external thing and because the clock is in the direction of current is the one which is shown by the arrows okay okay and uh, uh, this wire is connected to the rotating part yeah so basically to generate uh, ac power because this is okay you, you see the difference between the ring the previous ring here there is a ring right and here there are how yeah. many here there are how many rings uh, two rings yeah and these are called slip rings okay because this brush the contact point is going to slip on this ring okay 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 and there also the, the pressure is going to slip on the ring but in addition to that it is split that's why it's called split ring here there is no splitting just it's going to slip so it's all slip ring and this uh, if you plot the current in the ring the direction of the ring will current will change okay i in r1 okay from this bottom point to this top point it will be in one direction and from this top point to the bottom point will be in another, other direction okay so this is called ac current because the polarity of the current is changing okay so this is working of generator electrical generator right uh you have book right ncrt book yes okay and uh, yeah, this is basically the content of this book uh, uh, are you reading the book yes i am i'm reading the ncrt fine uh, any questions any doubts from what you read previously in this chapter previously yeah. Okay. Uh, so I want to ask: Are those brushes made of any specific uh, material? Yeah, it's called carbon brushes. This should be a conductor of electricity, and it should be soft. Otherwise, you will put some scratches and wear this ring, right? Right. Okay. Even for in a vehicle, when you are applying the brake, it will be a rubber, right, which is contacting right. the metal. So the rubber is because of the there is there will be damage to the metal right so one part should be soft and other part should be hard and the damage should be to the soft part which will be replaced okay so the brush is made of a softer carbon compared to the metal okay and the surface will be smooth so that the wear and tear is minimal and the rings over there in the generator and the motor they are stationary no no ring will rotate okay ring is rotating okay ring is attached to this middle axle no rotating part okay okay so the axle is rotating to which the ring is rotating hold on hold on okay one one thing this coil is you know the rectangular coil which is in between the magnet that has to rotate okay only then there will be current and this wire which is in the external circuit that should that should be fixed it cannot rotate if it rotates it will get tangled right get the point so only this uh, conductor which is within the between the magnet that will rotate that should be connected to the rotating part okay so if the, if the pressure is rotating uh, so one of them should rotate so if the ring is rotating then the rotating part should be connected to this one and the wire should be connected to the pressure i think that is more likely Okay. Uh, okay. Let me connect this wire to the brush and the uh, this thing to the this part. That makes sense. Because in here the middle axle has to rotate. Even in this one, the middle axle has to rotate. So uh, I think yeah, the, what is given in the book is correct. Explanation is not there. 
the precious stationery. Okay. The, okay. So the wire is connected to the brush, and this uh, wire, which is coming here, that is the mobile wire. So this wire is connected to the ring. This wire, no, it should be connected to the ring. So that that's mobile wire. It should be connected to the moving part. It makes sense, right? Yes. So similarly here also, the stationary part of the brush, so this wire is connected to the brush, and this uh, this wire is connected to the brush, and this uh, moving is going there. So this wire, which is moving, the coil, it's connected to the ring. Brush is stationary and the ring is attached to the axle and it is moving. Okay. The coil in between the magnets are rotating coil. That will move, that is attached to the axle and the ring is attached to the axle. So ring is going to move along with the coil. Brush is stationary. Right. Uh, okay, let's try to do this, do this one. Uh, which of the following correctly describes the magnitude near a long straight wire? So, the direction of magnetic field and the current is given by which rule? It's a long straight um. wire. So that is given by the right hand thumb rule. Yeah. So what is the direction of thumb? So direction uh, for the straight line, it would be the current, the thumb. Yeah. So which of the option is correct? So it would be D, concentric circles. Yeah. And whether it's clockwise or anticlockwise, that will be given by this thumb rule. Yes. Second question. So this would be a C. An induced current because of relative motion of the magnet on the coil. Yes. If the magnet is stationary, then there won't be any current. And even if the magnet and coil are moving together, then also there won't be any current. There should be relative motion between the magnet and the coil. Then there will be, there will be the change in the magnetic field value linked to the coil. Mm -hmm. In this one, if both the suppose this full setup is moving towards the right, then there won't be any current because the magnetic field at this point P at T1 and T2 are same. Because I'm moving the full thing, I'm moving the full thing, the coil and the magnet, everything, everything, the full setup and moving towards right. When I do that, the magnetic field at this point P, which is moving, will not change. Mm -hmm. Okay. When the magnetic field is not changing, then there won't be any current. <coughs> okay. But if magnet is moving towards left, then there is changing the value of magnetic field. And even if magnetic field is moving towards left, or the coil is moving towards left, but at a slower speed, then relatively the distance between these two will change. Right? Right. Then also there will be change in the magnetic field. Then also there will be current. So basically the relative motion should be there. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, due to relative motion between the distance. Okay, third one. So this, this is current. a third
uh, it's option A generator. Yeah, it's electrical generator. So this will generate electricity. This is a current generator. Okay. What is galvanometer? So that is the device I think which um, detects whether there is a flow of current in the circuit or not. Okay. What is ammeter? That is used for detecting the uh, I think those uh the current what is the difference between galvanometer and ammeter both are measuring current right i think it's that uh, for the galvanometer it doesn't differ which direction it's flowing i think for the ammeter it does because when we draw the circuit diagram we have to put a plus and minus before the ammeter for a galvanometer we do not do that uh, that's not true. A meter will measure, can measure high currents. Okay. Galvanometer. Oh. Okay, so galvanometer plus some circuit connection is an ammeter. Okay. okay. So the extra circuit connection takes care of the, uh, of the requirement that the, it can measure high currents. Okay. So from a galvanometer, I can also get a voltmeter for measuring voltage. So galvanometer some is plus some external circuit will give me volt meter and galvanometer plus some, some other external circuit will give me ammeter. Okay. Okay. So when I, once I convert to ammeter, I can measure high currents. Once I measure uh, convert it to volt meter, it can measure high voltage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So galvanometer is the basis, basis from which ammeter and volt meter are got or built. Okay. Okay, the essential difference between AC generator and DC generator difference. What is the difference? I think it is a uh, yeah. yeah. AC has got a slip ring, and DC will have a uh, split ring commutator. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because of the split ring, the carbon brush is going to alternate between the two parts of the ring. Right. See here in the case of slip ring, the brush B1 is always in touch with R1, the ring 1. And, and the brush B2 is always in touch with ring R2. Okay, so it's, it's not going to change. But in the case of split ring, the brush B1, it will be in touch with uh, the left part or R1 for half the time and it will touch the other other part for the half half time. So it will commute between the two halves. Mm -hmm. Right? Alternately it will touch the two uh, split rings. Two parts of the split ring. Right? Okay. So here the brushes in protect the same ring. So and that is why the current is alternating. Right. So the other part, when it goes to the other part of the magnetic system, the direction of current will change. Okay. Mm -hmm. At the time of short circuit, the current in the circuit increases heavily. Yeah, why does it increase heavily? Um, because I think you, uh, we've connected the um, the terminals together, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, how is voltage, current and resistance related? Sorry? Voltage, current and resistance, how are they related? V equal to IR. Uh, so when you short circuit, what will happen to the R value? It becomes zero. Yeah. So when you short it, R is becoming zero. So the current is V by R, right? Okay, so current will shoot to infinity. Mm -hmm. Two or false. First one. Uh, the first one would be false. Okay. Generator. 
Uh, true. Okay. If we get set of long circular coil, it will be parallel straight lines. Actually, if the question is not worked properly, long circular coil means set of coils. Big is very nice. Long circular. So this is true. Yes, and it will be uniform. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, this I have not covered this one. Okay, fine. I'll leave this one. List of three sources of magnetic fields. Okay, so um, three sources of magnetic fields. Uh, one could be the electric by uh, electric circuit. Uh, magnetic field uh, and the uh, bar magnet itself. Permanent magnet. Sorry? Permanent magnet. Yes, a permanent magnet and electric by passing electric current and um... okay, electric current you can pass either in a, a single circular coil or a solenoid. Right? Okay. Right. Basically there are two types. One is permanent and another one is because of the current. Right. So an electromagnet? Yeah, electromagnet, permanent magnet. And uh, maybe current coil uh, solenoid. Mm -hmm. okay. How does solenoid behave like a magnet? Can it determine the north and south poles? So, a uh, solenoid is behaving like a magnet because it's uh, producing a magnetic field once um, there's current passed through it. Yeah. And uh, if we do introduce a bar magnet, uh, if it repels, when we put the north, uh, the north side, the north direction, if it repels, and we can determine that is the north side, and if it attracts, uh, uh, the other side, the south, uh, the south pole, not for the south pole. Okay. Who is excuse the current current conductor placed in magnetic field? When is the When it has a high current. Okay, this is actually, okay. Again, there's a uh, use uh, left hand rule or right hand rule. This will be, I think, the uh, left hand. No, you have two rules, right? One is left hand rule, another one is right hand rule. Yes. So to find the force experience, so what is output in this case? So they're asking the force here. Yeah, so force is the output, right? Yes. So left hand rule you have to use. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, to increase the uh, value of the force, you have to increase magnetic field or current or both. Yeah. Okay. So magnetic field is more, then the force will be more. If the current is more, the force will be more. So you have to increase one of them or both. The force will increase. Okay. Uh, would the direction be down? Uh, okay, here, uh, what is our, you have to use left hand rule or right hand rule? Uh, we have to use the left hand rule. Because output is force, okay. Uh, imagine that you're sitting in a chamber with your back on one wall, electrons moving horizontally from back wall towards front wall. So the, uh, the direction of current 
the ratio of the electron motion is what? Uh, away uh, from you? So it's going towards the front, it's going away from us. Yeah, so the current ratio is towards you or away from you? It's away from us, it's going away, it's going straight. Uh -huh. uh, the electron is negatively charged, no? Oh. Okay, so the current is towards you. Oh, okay. So the middle finger is towards you. And uh, I'm just saying the right. your right side. Okay. So then what is the ratio of magnetic field then? So the magnetic field would be down. Yes, because the thumb is towards the right and the magnetic field, yeah, that's correct. Okay, label diagram of electric motor experience. Okay. This basically is the text. Right? Mm -hmm. Some division choose electric motors in your home. Motor pump. Okay. Anything else? Uh, not that I am familiar. What? Uh, I'm not very sure. I don't know. What about mixer? Okay. okay. Whenever something is rotating, there's a mechanical power. Okay. No? Oh, okay. Okay. Mixer and what else? Pan. Mm, sorry, can you repeat? And fan. Ceiling fan. Okay, okay. Table fan. All these things are rotating, right? So basically some force is generated. Using the current. Right, okay. Okay. Washing machine. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's almost used everywhere. Okay. Hair dryer. It's blowing out air, no? So something has to rotate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oil of insulated copper is connected to a galvanometer. What happened to the bar bank of this push into the coil? Drawn from inside the coil, then station into the coil. So, in the first and second case, there will be a current produced, whereas the third one, there won't be any current produced. Yeah, but they, what is the difference in the first and the second? So in the first one, if it's pushing the coil, then it would have a higher magnetic field. So I think more current and the second case less current. The magnetic field is lesser as compared to the first one. Uh, no, what matters is how fast it is changing. Whether it's increasing or decreasing does not matter. But the direction of the current will change. If the magnetic field is increasing, oh. then the direction will be one direction. If the magnetic field is decreasing, then the direction will be the opposite. But if the rate at which it's increasing and rate at which is decreasing, both are same, then the current in both directions will be same. Okay. Okay, the value of current depends how fast the magnetic field is changing. Increasing or decreasing does not matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one and two, the current will be same, but the directions will be opposite. Assuming that they are pushed and withdrawn from the with the same speed. Okay. Okay. Third one, it will be uh, no current. Only when B changes, there will be current. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two coils close to each other. Current in A is changed. The current in this will be decreasing. Uh, yes, there will be a current induced. What is the reason? So, if there's uh, the current being changed, then the magnetic field will change as well, along with the current. So, the current will be, be uh, changed in B. Yeah. 
Yeah, the magnetic field linking the coil B will change. So there will be current induced in coil B by electromagnetic induction. Yeah, and the current in coil B is changed. The magnetic field produced by A is changing, and that is that magnetic field is linking the coil B. So the magnetic field linking coil B is changing. Once there is changing magnetic field, there will be induced current by electromagnetic induction. Right. Mm. Principle of electromagnetic induction. Sorry. Principle of electromagnetic induction. Principle of electromagnetic induction. It basically says that when the magnetic field is changing, it has to change. Otherwise, there won't be any current. Correct. Right. Okay. So when when the coil current in the coil is coil A is changing, the magnetic field uh, linking the coil B will change, right? Right. So there will be current. Okay. So it will be determined the magnetic field produced around the straight current current conductor. What is the first part? Uh, this would be uh, the right hand thrower. Which root? The right hand thumb roll. Yeah. What about force experienced by current carrying conductor straight down? Straight conductor in a magnetic field perpendicular to it. So I think this would be the left hand rule, Fleming's left hand rule. Yeah, output is force. Okay, third one, current induced. Uh, this one would be the Fleming's right hand rule. No, oh, here, what is the output? Uh, current, so it would be right hand. Yes, right hand rule. Okay, this is theory part. Okay, so this chapter is almost done except for this uh, last part. Mm -hmm. So what what did you teach in your school? On oh, school, uh, currently they're doing reflection of light. Okay. Coaching. Coaching. Uh, they are doing. Uh, they they just started magnetic uh, effects. Okay. So what should I do next time? Uh, so once this chapter is done, we could probably uh, start with reflection. So I, I put the class video in my uh, YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, if you click the notification bell, you get the uh, notification. <coughs> yes. Yeah, you have to revise. Uh, and, yeah. uh, uh, you have to remember what is being learned. Okay? Yes. Okay, see you, see you on Monday. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.